Everyone's pointing like, to you. He's our neighbor. He told us we know him. Yeah, yeah. Can you stand oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. You know Not all the time, oh. but yeah, yeah. that way we can get you. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, what I'm going to be doing is giving a uh, uh, putatively but not actually brief overview of uh, meditation in psychology. So not at all going into the biology of what's going on, just the sort of uh, uh, qualitative subjective experiences, and then Dave will talk about the biology. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is sort of why we're doing this and what we might hope to get out of it. So uh, meditation, of course, originated with different religious groups, as did a million other practices. And uh, probably most of us in here have tried meditation and like it. But if you wanted to convince your friends to try meditation, well, fine, you Buddhists, you like your meditation, and the Christians like this, and the Shintos like this, and, and you know, uh, why would you listen to me telling you you should try meditation any more than you might listen to the 10,000 other practices? And of course, I'm only presenting on meditation. Perhaps the 9,999 other practices are better, but you'll have to attend another group to find out. <laughs> um, and so the question that I have constantly for this research is, uh, as far as uh, looking into this, there's sort of the PR value of, well, look, we always said it worked. Now we can show you data that it works. Uh, but what do you think some legitimate positive consequences might be of combining psychological science with meditation? Or what do you think are some possible negative consequences? So I think having an established Western scientific type of justification for meditation would probably bring more people in that wouldn't necessarily be interested otherwise. Yeah, so it's good for uh, being communicable. Science is really easy to communicate. Well, it um, provides another angle on how our mind, helping us understand how our mind works. You know, you're not going into the material like you would in psychoanalysis, you're just moving. Right, actually I think that's a big point, that's kind of what brought me into this, is, you know, the way that we understand the mind in meditation is different than the way we understand it in psychology, and what can we learn about either by combining them. Uh, what do you think about possible negative consequences? Anything that might get worse from this uh, this new meeting? Okay, well I'm going to talk about that at the end actually, my, my, uh, my concerns with that. So meditation is a very big term. Uh, it's defined just as focused attention. So uh, that means you can do an infinite number of things that would be called meditation because there's just an infinite number of things you could focus your attention on. Uh, there's a transcendental meditation in Christianity, there's a centering prayer, there's Jewish meditation, Sufi meditation, uh, Hindu meditation, and uh, the list goes on. There's many different traditions and many different meditations. So the one that we mostly talk about in psychological science is mindfulness. And uh, this comes from uh, Theravada Buddhism, it's the oldest form of Buddhism. And uh, one definition of it is the awareness that emerges through paying attention on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally to the unfolding of experience moment by moment. For a more operational definition, there was a meeting to come up with the three components of mindfulness. The first is self-regulation of attention focused on immediate experience. So you're not thinking about what you're gonna do later, you're not thinking about what happened 10 years ago or earlier in the day, and you're not stuck in fantasy. You're focusing on something that's currently happening. An orientation to one's experience is characterized by curiosity, openness, and acceptance. This was uh, developed by Bishop and colleagues who I imagine look something like that. <laughs> and <laughs> the third, which is I think the most useful in distinguishing it from other meditations, is there's no attempt to cultivate any particular experience. So uh, compassion meditation is not mindfulness because you're trying to cultivate compassion. Uh, mantra meditation would not be considered mindfulness because you have a mantra. And uh, may maybe it'd be worth clarifying that I don't mean to say mindfulness is better than mantra, better than, you know, hard to say something is better than trying to be more compassionate. Um, but uh, just as, as a definition of what mindfulness is. So uh, an important name to know in this field is John Kabat-Zinn. Uh, he's the man who really started the field. He's a professor at the University of Massachusetts 
Medical School in Worcester. And the other thing that always needs to be mentioned about John Cabot Zinn, he's really handsome. <laughs> he's kind of hard to pick out in that crowd. <laughs> So the first major mindfulness study was done by John Kabat Zinn in Massachusetts in 1985. And he's looking at 90 patients with chronic pain disorder, which is exactly what it sounds like. You're in pain all the time, generally a physiological cause, sometimes psychological cause, but you know that's not such a big deal. If you're in pain, you're in pain, it doesn't matter why. So uh, these people had on average uh, spent, uh, I think, seven years uh, trying to find any therapy for their pain that helped, and nothing helped. And the last ditch effort was, uh, this guy came into the room, pitched Buddhist meditation, sounded crazy, but you know, they'll try anything. So uh, he met with them for seven weeks, once a week, and the other days they did homework. After a seven week class for people for whom nothing else had worked for seven years, the following things decreased. Present moment pain went down, Negative body image went down. I like that joke. <laughs> Inhibition of activity by pain. So if your legs are in pain, you're not going to run a marathon. But maybe you really could walk from the kitchen to the bedroom, and before you weren't doing it. So there's less inhibition of activity. Mood disturbance decreases. A uh, general measure of what are your symptoms, you know, overall medical, psychological. Symptoms decrease anxiety, depression, and uh, actually people use less medication. <laughs> <clears throat> Things that increased, people's self-esteem went up. That's Super Mario, thinking he looks like Mario Lopez, clearly a high self-esteem. And activity levels went up. People were doing more. And importantly, all comparisons are relative to a placebo group receiving treatment as usual. If you can't read this, it says, what fits your busy day better, exercising one hour a day or being dead 24 hours a day? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they're, they're relative to a placebo group receiving normal medical treatment, and all of these uh, things that I just listed are better than treatment as usual, which is pretty amazing. So uh, there was a follow-up 15 months later. People were still meditating. Uh, not only were they meditating, they were maintaining their improvement on every single measure in the study except one. Present moment pain got worse but nothing else did. This is what happened to Lucy when she heard about this finding. It's a, very, <laughs> it's a very surprising finding. How could it be that your pain is getting worse? Imagine a worse problem than constant horrible pain. It's getting worse and nothing else bad is happening. So, uh, oh no, this has gone terribly. Uh, let's see, there's the bishop joke. No, it happened again. This is the worst. <laughs> okay, Lucy, go. Don't push end. It's next to the next button. There we go. So, the first acronym to know in the field, perhaps the biggest one, is MBSR. It stands for Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction. So kabat protocol was so successful that he uh, manualized it. And it's an eight week class uh, in meditation. Uh, you meet one day a week, and there's 45 minutes of homework uh, done usually along with the tape. Uh, one full day of meditation. And the class is cheap, it's probably averaging maybe $350 um, for an eight week class with all the benefits that were previously mentioned. and. The